Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Patrick here at VectorVest, and here at VectorVest we have a saying, and that is, let the trend be your friend. Well, I found an extremely interesting trend that you're gonna wanna see, so make sure to stick around as I show you exactly what's going on here and tell you how you can profit from it. So, let's get into it. All right, welcome back. So before I get started to give you guys a little background info on how I came up with this or what exactly was going on here. So I did a video on Monday talking about the similarities between the look of AMC and the look of GME. And I talked about or theorized that they could potentially be bundled up in some type of derivatives that are traded behind the scenes between big institutions. Well, I started doing a little bit more digging and I think I've got a better understanding of what is actually going on. Now, I've got some extra info to share with you all on the derivatives, but before we get into all that, let's take a look at the GME chart. So this is pretty much the graph of this year on GME. As we know, we had that sneeze back at the beginning of January, but then one of the big days that a lot of GME holders remember is the date of 310. That was when it ran up to almost $350 and then got slammed back down to a low of 172. Well, after that, it then went sideways for a little bit. And then you saw another run up coming into June right around the earnings date of the 9th of June for GME. And we saw another big run up right up to 350 and then it instantly came tumbling back down. Very, very similar to what we saw on the 10th of March. Well, once is a coincidence, twice is now starting to develop a trend. And I was looking at these dates and I happened to realize that all of these dates happen to end up on a Wednesday. Now, that will become important in just a few minutes, so just remember that point for right now. So since that point, we have been pulling back a little bit, flattening out, and now starting to form a base, it looks like, right around 160, 180, just where we were back around March, the end of March through April, May, coming up to that run up in June. So I got to thinking about it and, you know, was already looking at futures and looking at derivatives and different types of contracts out there and bundles of stocks and how they could be traded. And I came across an interesting um, observation here, and that is futures markets. Futures contracts for anybody who's not familiar with them are very similar to options, but instead of having the right to buy or sell, they are forced to settle that contract at the end of the expiration. Also, futures contracts, which most people think can just happen on commodities or indices, can happen on anything, interest rates, equities, assets in general, uh, indices, commodities, literally you name it, you can create a futures contract on it. But one of the interesting things about futures, and especially because they're a type of derivative that aren't typically traded by most retail investors, derivatives or futures contracts can be created by institutions and sold between one another and traded between one another. And therefore you may never be able to see that or even recognize it as a retail investor. So remember, we have a big run up on the 10th of March. We also had a big run up on the 9th of June. And then very similar patterns. We are seeing a repeat over and over again. Well, let's get into the info I promised you just a few minutes ago. All right, so first and foremost, let's start off on one of my favorite free websites, investopedia.com. Here I was looking at futures contracts and rolling them over. So one of the things that I was finding with all of this is that Traders will roll over futures contracts that are about to expire to a longer date contract in order to maintain the same position following expiry. So for example, what this means for you, whereas an options contract can expire worthless and you don't actually have to execute or follow through with the trade, a futures contract, you do actually have to settle the trade, the contract itself, before you can actually open up a rolling order or extending that contract out to that next quarter, that next expiry date. The role involves selling the front month contract already held to buy a similar contract, but with a longer time to maturity. So to give a little bit more insight, we scroll down here and we get a Y roll. And this is really the key that ties everything together here. 
And in the second paragraph, a futures position must be closed on either before the first notice day in the case of a physically delivered contract or before the last trading day in the case of cash settled contracts. So because there's no specific commodity and because they're based on equities, this would be a cash settled contract. The contract is usually closed for cash, meaning they have to actually go buy the actual underlying stock or asset and or sell the asset by the expiration there, and then simultaneously entering into the same futures contract trade with a later expiry date. So once again, the big difference between options and futures are that they actually have to settle the contract, meaning buy the underlying stock or asset, or sell the underlying stock or asset, depending on what the futures contract is stating there. And if these contracts are being rolled out and they are tied up in futures, that could explain some of the huge spikes that we're seeing is because these contracts or derivatives usually have extreme leverage built into them. So therefore there's a lot of buying pressure that needs to go on to settle some of these contracts. So next let's go in here and take a look at the expiration dates. So I found them here for 2021. We have March 19th, June 18th, September 17th, and then also December 17th. Now, if you recall, the first date we looked at was March 10th, nine days prior to the expiry date for the first set of futures contracts this year. Well, the big run-up occurred back in January. And so if these short institutions of people that were shorting GME 140% of the total float tried to hide their positions in futures contracts, well, that first big settlement period is going to come before March 19th. Now, if we go jump back into the graph, we had that big run up here on March 10th, nine days prior to the futures contract settlement date. If we go take a look at the calendar real quick, I'll just pull it up on the bottom right, go back to March. Here's the 19th, nine days prior, we had Wednesday the 10th. And keep in mind, this is a Wednesday. This is something I've noticed that has been extremely suspicious when I was doing my research into this. So remember that date, Wednesday, March 10th. Well, if we hop back into it, the next time, June 18th. Let's go ahead and take a look, pull up the calendar real quick in the bottom right. June 18th, count back nine days, another Wednesday, June 9th, the date that they had their earnings call. So as we stated earlier, if they want to roll their futures contracts out, then they have to do it before the expiration date. So they have to do it before the 18th, for example, of June. That way they can settle the trades and then roll out their expiration date to the next settlement date. Well, the next settlement date comes in September. If we go take a look at September, September 17th, we come up with a date that Wednesday, the week prior of September 8th. So if this theory is true and we are trading in a cyclical pattern, then I'd be willing to bet that we see another big run up with a peak coming on September 8th. I could be wrong. This is purely speculation, but once again, once is coincidence, twice is now starting to develop a trend. And as I said at the very beginning of this, let the trend be your friend. If you have an idea of when to expect a run up, how to take advantage of it, this could be an awesome opportunity to take advantage of a big move, especially at 160, because from 160 to 350 is about 100% gain that can be made in a very short period of time. And that's what we're about here is making you money here at VectorVest. So let me know your thoughts, pick away at this, but so far, everything seems to match up. And if that is the case, if they are bundling a basket of assets, then the same would hold true with AMC. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Hopefully this sheds some light onto what exactly is going on here. Once again, this is speculation. It is a theory for right now. But if we see a peak coming in on September 8th, then I think that kind of solidifies the theory as more than just a theory and shows us what exactly is going on and gives more proof to the manipulation that's going on with some of these stocks that retail of investors have been talking about for the last eight months now. So once again, thank you all for your time. If you've enjoyed today's video, as always, smash that like button. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to get notified for all the live content we have coming out for you throughout the week. And until next time, take care, adios, 
and I'll see y'all on the moon.